success. All right, so how did we get here and what are we doing? Well, we're mocking up and testing out our deployment system. So this rocket's gonna go up in the air. It's gonna, you know, hit the top of its flight, start rocking over, that's called Apogee. And at that point, we wanna deploy a very small parachute called the Drogue. And that's gonna make sure this descends, you know, less than 100 feet per second, probably around 75 feet per second. So um, just pretend <laughs> the booster and the yellow cord is all you see. Basically, we got a tubular nylon um, harness connected to two hard points down in the booster. Um, so at Apogee, a black powder charge is gonna explode and push the top of the rocket off the booster. And then 25 feet of 3 8 inch Kevlar is gonna come out. So this is just a little Nomex pad that's like fireproof material. Um, the drogue parachute is going to be wrapped in that so it doesn't get singed. So that charge is going to separate the two pieces. Pretend you don't see any of this black stuff or the big parachute yet. So basically 25 feet of Kevlar is going to get deployed. And then about a third of the way, or this is 30 feet, so about a third of the way up from the electronics, the nose cone is still going to be attached to this section here. Um, this drogue chute is going to come out. This is a a two foot diameter recon chute um, from Wildman Rocketry. And then that drifts down until we get to a, a lower altitude. So the advantage to this is it, it falls fast. The rocket doesn't drift as far. And then we deploy the main parachute. Um, I'm probably gonna do it around 600 foot. And that is gonna slow the rocket down to less than like 25 feet per second. So it lands nice and softly. So at around 600 foot, there's gonna be a bunch of black powder in here. That's gonna explode. It's gonna push the nose cone off of the rocket. Um, and then all this, this black webbing, again, some no mix to protect the parachute is gonna come out. And then that connects with an Elpin butterfly loop to a quick link. That's an 800 pound capacity quick link. This is a 1200 pound capacity swivel. I guess you use that for like shark fishing or something. Um, and that's going to connect to a 78 inch uh, nylon chute from Locke. And then about 10 feet away from that is going to be the nose cone. So, you know, hopefully the plan is this is going to weigh about nine pounds. Everything above it will weigh about seven. Um, so if we have you know, this webbing is good for like five or 7,000 pounds. It's crazy. This webbing's good for like 2,000. The swivels on the parachutes are good for 1,200 pounds. So my weakest link is this quick link. And if the rocket weighs, you know, nine pounds, that means I can handle about 100 Gs um, of acceleration before something snaps. Uh, hopefully everything stays below like 30. <laughs> Um, and we're well within our limits, but uh, that's what's going on with the recovery gear. Trying to show you the inside. I don't know if that's working or if I'm just making a bigger mess, but you get the idea. Here you guys go. Oh yeah, we'll give it a little twist as we go too. Or at least we'll try to. But I mean, that is slick somewhere right around there. And since this isn't going to get fiberglass, we're going to do our runny CA trick. And we'll sand this later, but it just keeps these edges. They're already beat up. I should have done this basically when I unbox this thing. Um, so when you guys go to build yours, you'll know better than me. I need a two inch switch band. I'm going to steal it from the booster section. Um, I got more room there to lose, so we're going to cut two inches off of that. Uh, I'm hoping I can just roll this into the blade and very carefully spin it around. Um, and hopefully nothing kicks back and blows up in my face. Um, so yeah, we're going to try it. So I 
probably explain this, but um, I'm gonna glue this switch band off center one inch. So I'll have, you know, five and a half inches into the payload section and then seven and a half into the booster. And what that gives me is when I put on a 12 inch payload, um, you can see this nose cone goes in about that far. So once this tube's here and this nose cone's there, I have about that much free space. So if I had centered it, I'd just be losing an inch and I feel like I kind of really need the space. And this is all stiff enough that I am not concerned about there being slightly less than one diameter of tube worth of coupling inside. So that's where the switch band's gonna go. The masking tape on here, so any glue that goes beyond, that gets pushed out kind of as a fillet, you can remove quickly. Uh, you'll see gluing cardboard to cardboard with wood glue is almost scary. This, the cardboard like wicks the moisture out of the glue and this sets like instantly. Like, um, I'm actually nervous. I won't even have enough time to get the switch band all the way down. So, acting a little post haste here. There we go. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna take and remove that like so. That kind of worked. Cool, so here's a pro tip. Um, I'm laying out my bulkheads and I wanna put holes that correspond to these U-bolts. If you basically measure the diameter of these, so, you know, it's gonna be about 0.24, we'll call it a quarter inch. Take your calipers, measure the outside there, zero it, and then go back the diameter. So until this says 0.25, we'll call it. Basically, you've measured the outside, and then you're coming in a half diameter on each side. And there you go. You're right in the center. So you can go ahead and mark your tool. whole mess of hardware here let's talk u-bolts real quick here so i'm basically just gonna run a nut all the way up we'll put a little washer on top big thick backing plate on the back run our nuts down but before we get to the end we're gonna get a little loctite thread locker this is the blue Honestly, I kind of wish I had the red. That is like the permanent one. Basically, to remove the nut, you need a blowtorch. Um, this one is removable, so maybe that's a good thing. Who knows? Um, there's not going to be a lot of twisting action on this because it's a U-bolt. So this will probably do. And that's how we're going to secure these. Here's another one. Um, if you're cutting all thread, threaded rod, I like to just do a double nut on it. Um, one, it helps guide your saw, and two, once you're done cutting, if you've mangled any threads, when you back those nuts off, it straightens them out. You just hit them with a file, and you're uh, good to go. See? Look at that. All right, excuse the workbench, but I just finished assembling the Egg Timer Quantum. It's like a probably the most advanced electronic project I've done. A lot of surface mount components that are really, really tiny. That is the size of the part we're soldering. All right, surface mount components. Pick them up with your tweezers. Position them, trying not to be too shaky. And then hit the other side with solder. I 
I'm going to connect the battery for the first time. Um, it's a 2S LiPo. Um, so in theory, if I did this right, I should hear three quick beeps and then a long one. If I don't hear those, we should disconnect this real quick. And if we see smoke, um, we definitely know I did this wrong. So this is it. Here we go. I think that means it works. So this is really neat. This is my flight computer. It's basically an altimeter that runs off barometric pressure. Um, and what it's gonna do is fire charges that deploy my drogue parachute and main parachute. So this is how I recover my rocket. Knowing that it runs off barometric pressure, I made this kind of ghetto vacuum chamber. It's a uh, syringe back from Eddie's. <laughs> Uh, antibiotic days um, and a mason jar and some hot glue and basically pulling this plunger all the way up simulates like a 700 foot flight it's going to create a vacuum in here that simulates the atmosphere getting thinner as the rocket is going higher and higher and then we're going to make sure this thing lights up twice easy as that so that's the drogue now we're falling, and there's the main. It worked. It actually worked. <laughs> We've got an MFJ initiator in there. Can't call it an igniter because that's regulated by the ATF. <laughs> um, and then we've got two grams of triple seven smokeless powder. It's not black powder, it's smokeless powder. Oh boy, and that barely fits. All right, and three layers of masking tape over the black powder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs>